playing a new game. Hey there, friends. How's it going? So this is David Potts with Song Notes, and I'm pumped to finally be bringing you a lesson for Brown Eyed Girl, the Van Morrison absolute classic. So great song. I'm going to jump right into it. This is a song you can play with just four chords. I'll talk about these chords, show you a few finger position tips that'll make the transitions easier if that's giving you trouble. I'll talk about three different ways you can strum it, whether you want something super beginner friendly, something a bit more intermediate, or something a bit more advanced with a bit more of a percussive flavor as well. And then finally, I'll talk about the intro riff. I'll show you the sort of basic way to play it in open position, but then also show you the fun way that uses these sort of sixes, right? It's so fun to play. I can't wait to teach it to you. So um, whether you're a super beginner or you're a bit more advanced, there's a lot to chew on here. And let's jump on in. Um, all the, the links and everything that I'm going to reference in this lesson as far as other lessons I've made to teach you that strum or this or that, it's all on my lesson page for this on songnotes.net. That's my website. Uh, you can find this video. Uh, that I have a few backing tracks you can use, uh, a link to the song sheet. If you want something print friendly to follow along with the lyrics, it's all there. So check that out. But let's dive on into this. Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. And I can't wait to teach you how to play this one. Let's go. So let's kick this one off by looking at the chord shapes we're going to need. So big picture, it's just going to be these four chords, right? Your G, your C, your D, and your E minor, which will make a brief appearance. Now, if you need help with any of these chords or any other chords, check out my beginner chord guide, because I'll show you how to play all these. I'll also show you some must-know, like, modifications, where you, so you can add a note, remove a note to each of these chords to add a little bit of flourish and embellishment in any song you play, okay? So that's available over at my website, but I'm gonna show you the tip for this song that I recommend doing. For your G and your C and your D, I recommend using either one of these finger position pairings. Check this out. One way is to do your ring finger on the low E string for the G, right? And if you do this, it makes it nice and easy to switch to the C because you just hop these two fingers, one string thinner, put your index finger down on the second string, and you have your C, okay? So check out that efficient finger movement from the G to the C. And if you do this, what you'll wanna do is for the D, just use a D7 instead, right? Open second, first, second. Now check this out, my, my G, my C, my D7. Look at the efficiency of that, right? These two fingers are always going to be on the thickest two strings for the G and the C. And then our index finger is only going to come down on that first fret of the second string for the G7 and for the C, okay? So that's one way to do the chords. The other way would be like this with your middle finger on the thickest string for the G. And then for the C, what you can do, if you could use a regular C if you want, but that's a big jump, right? You have to do some big finger movements. What you could do is just use a C add nine, right? Just hop these two fingers, one string thinner each, and you have your G, your C add nine. You would use this in place of a C. And then you go to a D, and when you do this, notice how your ring finger is gonna be on the second string third fret for all three chords. So the name of the game here is efficiency. Whatever finger positions you choose, just be mindful of the other chords and you can use these sort of uh, voicings that just make it really easy. So one more time, you can either do ring finger on your G, thickest string, go to your C, right? Easy hop there and then use a D7 in place of a D. Whenever you have a D, just use this D7, it'll work just fine. Or you could do this G voicing with four fingers here, middle finger on the thickest string, go to a C add nine, okay? And then for your D, just do a regular D. And in this voicing, your uh, ring finger is gonna stay on the same string for all chords, okay? I recommend uh, just, you know, with any song you play, look for these efficiencies. I have a whole separate lesson on the G major chord and different voicings of, uh, or different finger positions you use, uh, depending on what your other chords are. So that's available over on my website as well. Then you'll also need that E minor chord, right? Just open, second, second, open, 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 okay? Uh, that one's pretty straightforward there. So now that we know the chords, let's look at the chord progressions, right? What are the order we're going to use the chords in this song? Now, the intro, the verse, and the uh, sha-la-la-la-la-la part are all going to use this one main progression, right? This G, 2, 3, 4, to C, 2, 3, 4, to G, 2, 3, 4, to D, 2, 3, 4, okay? Very straightforward, one measure for each chord. Okay, a measure is four counts, right? I can count it, I'll do that right here. Ready, and go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, D, two, three. So you can sing the verse like this, 
and the chorus, okay? And this is what you're gonna use during the intro as well uh, if you wanna, you know, get down with that. So um, a couple things I'm gonna say here. Uh, this is the one, four, one, five. That would be the chord progression if we were to use Roman numerals, right? Uh, in the key of G, this is the one chord, this is the four, this is the five chord. If you're interested in learning more about this, I have a practical music theory course, and I also have a key of G cheat sheet. You can see this, how this is the one, the four, and the one, and the five. It's just a handy way of referring to things. That way, if you were to play this song in a different key, you could just use the one, four, one, five in whatever key you switch to, and then you could still sing Brown Eyed Girl, okay? So uh, those are the chord progressions we'll need. Now, if we were to sort of look at the first couple lines of the verse here, we could sing, even if we did a single strum, right? Uh, G to hey, where did we see go? G, days when the D came, right? G, down in a C hollow. G, sit, play in a new game, D, three, four, one more time. Laughing and a running, skipping and a jumping, three, four, G, in the misty morning fall with all our hearts are thumping in you. Okay, then we go to the chorus, right? The chorus is going to be a C, two, three, four, to D, two, three, four, to G, two, three, four. For E minor, two, three, four, to C, then to D, then one measure of G, okay? That's all we're gonna need there. Then we go to this little refrain part. Do you remember when we used to sing? For this, we're just gonna stay on D for three measures, right? Do you remember when? Oh, we used to sing sha-la-la-la, then you go back to this progression I already showed, right? G, two, three, four to C, two, three, four to G, then back to D, la ti da Okay, so G is our home base. That's how you're going to play uh, the, the intro, the verse, the chorus, and the refrain. That's all you need for the entire song. Now, I recommend starting off doing just simple strums. What I just did there was a single strum on each one count. Okay, it makes it nice and straightforward. Now from there, let's talk about strumming. I'll show you some ways you can spice this up, okay? Uh, the simplest way, aside from doing just one strum per chord, is to do a strum on the one count and the three count, okay? That's gonna be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hey, where did we go? Okay, you can tap your foot if it helps. Days when the rains came. Three, four, G, two, down in a hollow. No up strums yet, nice and simple. Play in a new game, okay? A G, to laughing and a running, hey, hey. So once you get comfortable with this, we can level things up and go to the next level, okay? This one's gonna be a little bit trickier because we're gonna have some up strums, but it's going to be a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. Up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, okay? On the counts, that would be a one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and... I recommend keeping your strumming hand moving in that, that sort of down, up motion all the time. And then you just sort of engage the strings whenever you need to do a strum, right? So down, down, up, up, down, up down, down, up, up, down, up. Notice how my strumming hand is sort of always moving, okay? It's just a very helpful tip to get into when you're uh, working on your strumming. So we could do the progression like that. Let's do the first line again, all right? One, two, ready, go. Hey, where did we go? Days when the rains came Down in a hollow Playing a new game Laughing and a running Hey, hey I'm going to go into the chorus after this next line, okay? And you'll see how it sounds there In the misty moan and fall with All the hearts are thumping and see With you, my brown-eyed girl E minor, then to see you my brown eyed girl D, do you remember when we used to sing sha la 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 la
Okay, so that's what you're gonna use for that strum. One tip I have is to just really practice that strum by itself, right? Without the chords, maybe if you need to, do this until you can do it without thinking about it. And it might take more than one practice session, right? You might have to put in some reps to do it, right? But I recommend doing it a few times a day, a couple days in a row. You can even put the song on and then just mute the strings and sort of strum over it, right? Strum along with the song, right? I have an example here I can show you if I do my face ID here. I'm gonna play the chord progression. G to C, two, three, four to G. Now watch this, I'm gonna strum. I'm gonna strum along, but no chords. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. This is a great way to work on your strumming, okay? And you can go through the entire song like that, whether you use my backing track that's available on my website, or you use uh, Brown Eyed Girl, the Van Morrison version, right? You can mute the strings, just play along. His version is kind of fast, but this is a great way to get that strumming up to speed, okay? Now, the last thing I'll say is a more advanced strumming pattern I like to use is this down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop. It's gonna sound like this. It's a bit more advanced. One, two, three, four. It's like a percussive slap strum on the two and the four counts, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Let's sing along, right? I'll talk about this in a second. Hey, where did we go? Days when the rains came Down in a hollow Playing a new game Okay? So what I'm doing there to do this technique, I have a whole separate video. It's percussive slap strumming, a separate video on my website with a PDF showing you sort of a, a document, you know, you can print out and, and reference and everything. But I'll explain it quickly here as well. That percussive strum is all happening with my right hand, okay? There's nothing happening with the left hand to make it happen. All I'm doing is I'm basically coming down with a down strum motion, right? But I'm going to effectively take this sort of inner part of my hand, my like fleshy part right here, and I'm gonna hit the strings just before I strum. And that way my strum, it's almost like strumming when my hand is already there, but with that slap, it becomes more of a impactful hit, right? And the challenging part is to do a down, up, uh, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, up, down, up, chop, down, up, chop, up. Okay? This again is not a strumming pattern that you're necessarily gonna learn overnight if you've never used it before, right? I had to spend a long time working on this and even then it was many months before I could really do it with confidence. And even that was after probably a few years of playing. But my point is if you approach it steadily with practice and intention and you check out my other lesson, get the PDF for that, it's gonna really help you put in the reps to get the practice with this. But if you give it time, it will um, sort of come together. And again, you can do the muted approach right one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you could play the whole song like this i'll just hey where did we go right so whether you practice it uh, with my backing track or using the song recording, you don't need to play the chords. You can sort of use the muted strum approach and then work on those two and the four counts, getting that percussive strum right there, okay? So that's how you're gonna do a strumming for this song. And then you have uh, what you need uh, for an easy strumming pattern, an intermediate one, and a sort of more advanced one, okay? Now, let's talk about the uh, intro riff. Now, this is the fun part of this song, right? A couple ways to play this. So one way is to use the sort of uh, basic notes in open position, just one note at a time. And you repeat that, okay? So what's happening there is for the G, I'm going on the third string open, putting my middle finger down, second fret, and then playing the second string open. 
Okay, these are the first three notes of the G major scale. If you need help with your scales, I have a whole separate lesson on the, the major scales in open position for the five most common keys, G included, right? So one, da, 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 da. And then for the C, I'm gonna go from this note, first fret of the second string, third fret of the second string, open thinnest string, right? And then you go back to the G. Then we have to go to the fourth fret with our pinky or ring. Okay, and you can do the entire song like, or the entire intro like that, right? Now you might think, hey, how am I gonna play this when I'm strumming? Well, you can't necessarily do that easily, but what you can do is get my backing track, put it on, it's just going over G, C, G, and D, and it's a perfect thing to practice over. So check this out. Yep. Turn it up a little bit, here we go. little thing you can practice there. It's a nice little just exercise using those three chords and those, those couple of notes for each chord. But now let me show you the way that is really fun that I like playing it, which is going to use these uh, two notes played at the same time. So these are called sixths in that there are six notes away within the major scale. Okay, so uh, the, this might seem tricky at first, but check this out. I'm going to show you a couple ways to pick this. First, I'm just going to use my fingers, but then I'll talk about some hybrid picking techniques you can use, which are a bit more complicated. If you just use your fingers, I'm just going to use my index and, and, and thumb here. So check this out, right? For the G, we're going to be on the first string and the third string. So position your right hand on those strings, okay? First string and third string. Then you're going to take your index finger, put it on the third fret of the thinnest string, and your middle finger, put it on the fourth fret of the third string, okay? So let's call this four, three, because it's fret-wise, it's the fourth fret and the third fret, okay? And you're gonna pluck them together. Get used to that motion, it might feel weird at first, but once you get comfortable with that, you can basically move your middle finger up to the fifth fret, okay? It's just moving one fret up, okay? And then you're gonna put your right ring, your left ring finger, or your fretting hand's ring finger on the uh, fifth fret of the thinnest string. So we're gonna call this five, five, okay? But you're gonna pluck them together. So if you do the first chord, or the first little pluck here, and then the second one, just practice going between those at first, right? And once you get comfortable with that, we can add the third little chord here of the G measure, which is gonna be seven and seven. So notice how the G measure is just going four, three, five, five, seven, seven. Then you go back down. Okay, so I recommend taking this slow at first. Four, three, five, five, seven, seven, five, five, four, three. If you just do those three chords over those five sort of plucks, right, you can do, right? Da, da, ba, ba, da. So that's what we're going to do for the G measure. Now for the C measure, this might seem complicated, but we're going to use the exact same fretting sort of pattern. We're just going to start our, we're going to move our starting point. Instead of doing four, three, we're going to do nine, eight. Okay. On the, the same frets or same, yeah, same strings. That is same strings. The frets change, but the strings are the same. So nine, eight, 10, 10, 12, 12, go back down. Okay. So and then we're gonna go back to that G. So basically notice how the first measure and the third measure are the exact same. And the second measure is the same pattern, we just have a different starting point. So the first three measures would be this, right? Okay, now we have this uh, fourth measure. Things are gonna be different, but uh, big picture, it's very similar, okay? We're gonna to move to strings two and four here. And we're gonna start off seven and seven with our middle and ring fingers. But notice how it's just like we were doing, you know, the five, five and the seven, seven, right? Like we did in those first couple measures. Seven and seven, and then we're gonna jump down to four and three. Okay, so notice how this last measure, it's kind of just like the G measure, it's just everything is a string 
thicker, right? It's the second and fourth strings. And then we're gonna start on seven and seven instead of starting on four and three, okay? So if you do the whole thing slowly, it would sound like this. And I'll do the backing track practice in a second too, ready? This jump up to the C is tricky. It's really tricky. You kind of have to give yourself some sort of uh, visual or I guess a visual mnemonic device as far as where you jump, right? For me, it's helpful if I focus on that ninth fret dot and I know that's where my middle finger has to go. Okay, so let me put on the backing track now because this is one of the fun things about this song is you can get my backing track over at my website and practice along using this. Check this out. I'm gonna let it play one time. G to C and back to G and then to D. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you get the idea there. And I'll have a, a backing track that's a bit slower than one that's a bit more sped up. But both of them are slower than Van, Van Morrison's recorded version. His recorded version of the song really cranks along. It's about 150 beats per minute. It's actually quite, quite fast. So playing this um, at his speed is tricky, okay? Now, here's one thing I wanna teach you. It's how to do this with your pick. This is gonna use hybrid picking. This is a technique that's uh, a bit more advanced, but I wanna just introduce it to you here, okay? The main idea is everything I just showed you with the intro, you have to know those notes, okay? If you don't know the notes, rewatch that section. But instead of plucking with our thumb and our index finger, we're gonna pluck with our pick and then our middle finger is gonna do the thinnest string, whatever the thinnest string is in our set of chords, right? I'm a bit rusty here, but let me show you how. You're gonna pluck the third string with your pick, right? And then use your middle finger to pluck the thinnest string. And I find that when I do this, I have to sort of angle my hand in the right sort of angle, because if it's not angled correctly, Either my pick is gonna to be too weak or it's gonna to be too strong. And you want balance between these two fingers, okay? So take it slow. Okay, that's very slow. I'm admittedly not as proficient at this, but you would take it really slow at first. We're, throw rhythm out the window. If, if it's really hard, just don't worry about the rhythm yet. Just do the notes, right? Dum, bum, 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 bum. Take your time, switch. Dum, bum, 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 bum. Take your time, switch. Okay, this is the tricky part going to this D. And if you take your take rhythm out, slow it down, just worry about clean notes. Play the notes in the right order cleanly. Do that a few times over practice sessions and practice sessions. You'll be able to do it in, a, in the actual rhythm of the song, right? Whoa, I fumbled at the end there, but I'm keeping it in there for honesty's sake. I just wanna show you, you can do it like that, though it's a bit more tricky. So I like doing uh, the pinch with my just fingers here. You can kind of hold your pick and your ring in, uh, middle fingers, you know, and then grab it when you start strumming. Or you could, really, you could do it with the, you could just mute the second string and just strum it. In these versions, what I'm doing is leaning my middle finger into the second string, right, to mute that. It's a bit trickier, the sound isn't as clean, but that's an option as well. So now you have everything you need. You know the chord progression, the chord shapes, you have a few different strumming options, and you know the uh, intro riff in a few different ways. So now we can do a full playthrough of the song. Now, if you wanna see a slow uh, play-along cover, I have one over at my website. Um, you can check that out, and um, I have these backing tracks as well. Those are available for, for download, and you can just play them on the webpage over there, okay? I have a slower one and an intermediate one. So I hope you all found this helpful. Brown Eyed Girl is such a fun song, and um, I look forward to uh, 
you know, playing this one um, using this song sheet. I, I've learned this song, you know, 20 years ago, but I never have written things up. And I'm, I'm excited to have all the lyrics uh, properly written up. And of course, you can get my song sheet if you're interested in that. So thanks for watching, everyone. Um, all the links for all the accompanying techniques that I've taught or that I've referred to in this video, they're over on my lesson page for this song. So check that out. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, my friends, take care and bye-bye.